Welcome to the World of Dance After Show presented by World of Dance Studios. I'm Kristen Burt and it's the finale. I know some of you on the East Coast have already seen the outcome, but West Coast, you know the story. There are spoilers to be had in this episode, so you can always watch it later on the archive. Welcome to the World of Dance After Show presented by World of Dance Studios. I'm Kristen Burt and it's the finale. I know some of you on the East Coast have already seen the outcome, but West Coast, you know the story. There are spoilers to be had in this episode, so you can always watch it later on the archive at uh, World of Dance Studios YouTube channel. I'm so excited about tonight's guests because not only are they co-executive producers of World of Dance, but they are also two-time Emmy winners. Please welcome to the show, Tabitha and Napoleon Dumo. Hi. Hello. I, I kind of actually, I need to say welcome back because you've been making appearances uh -huh. the entire season. We appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. It's been so fun. It's so fun because you're like, you're in it when you're in work mode. And then it's so nice to kind of come out and see it and, and talk about it and talk about some of the things that no one gets to hear about. Yeah, we've appreciated your insight all season. I know you and you guys and I have been texting back and forth uh, all summer long, but <laughs> we, we get to the finale and I think that this is a really big deal. Um, I knew about it, but a lot of the audience didn't realize until they watched the finale tonight. It was at the start of the pandemic when everything shut down. Oh, yeah. You guys had to do the finale early and without an audience. Oh, let's yeah. talk about stressed <laughs> love. I think I got like 18 extra gray hairs in my head from the finale. <laughs> but you know what's funny is it's it's funny how many people don't know because I will, <laughs> you know, I've been getting every blue moon. I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll I'll put something in in the, in our social media, and people will literally curse me out about people not, you know. Hey, right, nobody's wearing masks. You? What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, it wasn't. We we were it's still months day. ago. <laughs> And then so when you when you do that, I think a lot of people don't realize and you know, you they don't TV realize magic. TV man and TV magic and and all of that. And I don't want to blow it for them either. So I don't say much. I just, you know, <laughs> we're just not wearing them. <laughs> but surprise, we found out, of course, on the finale tonight that uh, yeah. obviously it was a serious situation. We had Jennifer Roman from Oxygen on last night, and she talked about the fact that it was hard because there wasn't an audience to feed off of. Oh, how did you get the acts ready for that? Well, I mean, let, first of all, how do we got the acts ready with two less days of rehearsal time for a finale? These guys were so stressed because it's, you know, it all comes down to this moment. It comes down to making the right choices. And am I prepared? And to take two days away from them was huge. Huge. From everybody, from, yeah. from our entire team, from everybody who's producing the show, to and, and especially for the acts, to just say, yo, if we don't do this today, we might not. And literally, the day we wrapped, the very next day we went Studio. into quarantine. Yeah, Studio so closed down, everybody closed how down. How sad would it have been if we waited and then we never got to have a conclusion to the show? So I think in all in all, it was like a smart choice to make. But there was a lot of pressure for the contestants and everybody. But, but let's did. talk about this this season in general oh, uh, uh, with, so with those guys and the pressure. We normally shoot World of Dance over somewhere around six to nine weeks. Mm -hmm. And we shot it all in three weeks. So these guys, <laughs> these guys had to around. come in like with two numbers. And, and three sometimes just because, you know, they weren't, we weren't sure if they were going to go into, you know, uh, how far they would continue. Yeah. How far they would continue or, or if the judges would want to see them a second time. So these guys were turning routines around like, like nothing for, for these guys to come up with the creative uh, geniuses that they did was <laughs> amazing because we were very scared. You know, we, we have another, uh, Co-EP on the show, Kelly Parker, who, who who does the schedule, and she did an amazing job with that schedule. And our and our showrunner Matilda, they they said, "Do you think people can do this?" And, and I we said, were "Like I don't know, maybe." <laughs> and I just tried to stay positive, maybe. maybe and in my mind, I was like, "Oh, this no. is going to be so so uh, difficult." You know, if if it was like say on on a, on so you think you dance where you're learning where you learn from another choreographer, well then right. maybe not. You just have to retain the material. But to have to come up with the material and be in it and be in it is the most difficult thing. Yeah. So these uh, hats off to every single contestant who Who's was on this tonight. season. And for these guys in the finale, our four in the finale. Wow, guys. Wow, wow, wow. Well, well, let me ask about that. 
why the shortened season? Because I think a lot of people are so used to, you know, watching World of Dance go out over six, you know, 16 episodes. Sometimes we've had, I think, yeah. 12, 14 episodes, some seasons. I know you guys had JLo at the Super Bowl halftime show. The, the schedule was tight. Yeah. Literally the day after Super Bowl happened, we, we jumped into World of Dance. And then the yeah. following week, we were, uh, we were shooting for the next three weeks. Yeah. One after the other, and Literally, sometimes you I was at the Super Bowl giving notes to crews and 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 contestants, sending in rehearsal videos, so I we could be ready as soon as we you know as soon as hit we the ground. Back, yeah. yeah, hit the ground. But you know, it's it's um let, let's be honest, it's it's TV world, and and everybody understands these 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 things that come in, and and um, World of Dance is a very expensive show, and if we wanted we to if we wanted to continue, and... we wanted to we wanted. We, we have to take away a little bit of money. I mean, we went hardcore for those first three seasons. When you think about a show, to defend the show, we would have 400 dancers on that show. Imagine housing 400. It's not 10 contestants like on, on other shows. It's yeah. 400 dancers. And the amount of money that takes is quite a bit. And, you know, we did, you guys didn't always, uh, audiences didn't always get to see 400 dancers, but, um, right. but we gave every, all 400 of them a chance and uh, all 400 of them were on that big stage. So it gets quite expensive when you do that. Um, and we want the and show I to think, continue and do many year, many more seasons because there's so much talent out there. Yeah. Um, do you, have you heard anything on season five yet? Any Not words? Not yet. yet. I think everything in the TV world is all like up in limbo between, you know, how to do productions and do many shows. Safe we're and, not sure how live shows or yeah. TV shows that are that are in a live environment, how we're going to uh, to skirt around this. And, and maybe it's just waiting so that we're all safe, you know? Yeah, I'm, the good news is that I think that the lead-in of America's Got Talent, which we didn't have last season, but had this season, is successful. The ratings have been strong. Yeah. So yes. if you go too paired, that's good. I, I think, I think, yes, I think it's really positive. And I think I love the new change in the format, you know, because I really felt like uh, it gave us a little insight to like seeing them a little more raw, a little more stripped down. I love seeing the judges feel that close to them in the warehouse. And they, I felt like um, the chemistry between the judges being able to get up and kind of engage with them because it was really, the proximity was just, kind of close and in your face. You can tell if someone's got the, the moxie or not when you're this close to them and you feel them perform. You What's know? the moxie? The moxie. Savannah Mansell is the moxie. The moxie. <laughs> that little tiny like nine-year-old had the moxie. Right. <laughs> I like the moxie. I don't, whatever that is, the, I want that because yes, you need We need it. a lot more of that. When they're in their raw state, you cannot miss the dance. And that is something we all enjoyed. The judges really enjoyed it. Every, mm -hmm. I think everybody, I think viewers in general enjoyed it. And you, and you focus on nothing else. Not that we don't want the creative because that's what, you know, we, we love to do as well. Yeah. But we love to you also see the dance. Yeah. yeah, you appreciate you, it you more appreciate when the time comes, steps, hopefully. Yeah. At least hopefully. Well, it felt like a big move from the warehouse onto the big stage. So I kind of appreciated that of like, okay, here we are. You have made it. You've earned your right for yeah. to make it to that World of Dance stage. I could have spent a little more time at the World of Dance stage though, too. Well, yes, yeah. if, if we had a maybe episodes? a couple more, a couple more, more. One, one, one more episode maybe. But, you know, it, it was really nice to watch all the dancers come onto the stage and and let they just would walk around and kind of this is it it's almost <laughs> and we like, were in that we were in that guys 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 we got two more episodes to shoot come on but, but you know everybody's like wow we're here and that that's a great what's, feeling what's the place in rome that you go to the gladiators coliseum. Go, the coliseum right it's like we have the coliseum of dance so you see them when they're their eyes light up they walk in they look around they're like this is it because it really kind of resembles the coliseum as well especially the I, kids not the kids the moms yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the dance moms. Well, I, I went in on, during season three and did a set visit and I was so overwhelmed by the set. Um, yeah. The noise of like the 360 cameras, the audience that was there. It's a lot for the dancers to take in. You really have to focus yeah. when you're on that yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to realize like, you know, you, you, as a performer, the energy in that kind of room is different than the warehouse. And it, and it really kind of, sometimes it can mess with you emotionally or it can make you feel charged up emotionally. And as you know, with the finale, like 
we took the audience away, so they didn't get much time. Yeah, it was, it was, that's that was a hard really thing. Weird. Like literally two days before, the audience was pounding <sighs> as they're coming in, and that you know, like like the Gladiator ring, and they're screaming, and you could just see them light up. Whoa! Even you know, I, I think even like MDC three had a little bit of a hard time getting into their emotion. They were just like, "This is awesome!" Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Hold on, I have a really serious piece here. <laughs> So, Focus, you're going to be pretty and graceful now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But then on the finale, to take that all away. Um, well, I felt a know, little sad it's, in my it's heart. A little, it's a little different because there is a big difference when we do our camera block and there's no audience in there and they, they're doing it full out like they would normally do. And then when they perform, what you know, as with, with any performer, you hear that audience and the roar of the, uh, of the crowd and you can't help but take it up a notch. You know what I loved about this finale is that it was a really wonderful representation of dance genres. Please, yes. I mean, you had countries represented. Tutting, you had uh, obviously salsa, and I think oxygen kind of represents this wonderful fusion of so yes. many different styles. Because um, we've heard complaints from fans and viewers sometimes saying it's just it's either going to be hip hop or it's contemporary. This you couldn't complain in this finale because it was no. such a great representation across no, the board. It, everybody was represented, and it was great. It felt balanced. You you kind of didn't, and and you loved them. Sadly, like you loved them all so much, and almost equally because they were different. It was it, you know hard hard to pick a favorite. <laughs> I posted a video of you talking to them about that. Yeah. About yeah. Uh, today I posted a video of you saying, guys, I just can't believe how much how many different styles are represented here in our finale. Yeah. What an, an amazing finale it's going to be. And yeah. it, it sure was. My favorite thing about the finale <laughs> is the creative aspect that we get. We got to have actual pyro because we when you have an audience in 360, you can't have pyro because it gets too close to them. It's so we got to do real pyro. So we MDC3. On the positive <laughs> side, we're like, let's have pyro. <laughs> we're not we're like, there's an no audience. audience. And we're like, fill it with pyro. Everything on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the good decisions you get to make. I mean, that's pretty exciting. You gotta, you gotta, you know, do what you can for everyone that's in the finale. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. To know, because we always hear like, what is it going to take for a soloist to win? I think you know we've come really close. We we've had Michael Domeski up there. We've had yeah. Briar Nole. Um, but they, I think they have it harder because they're on their own, and yeah. you're trying to wow everyone. And then you know you see an act like the Kings with a huge crew flying across the stage yeah. what does it take for a soloist to win what do you think I, honest honestly they soloists have it the hardest it, they really do they have to have such variety in their in their tool shed because week after week just seeing one you person on you can't person. rely on another person to kind of carry you through and do something impressive while you take the back seat, or they may be good at this and you're good at this, so it, it gives you a little more longevity. So I think the amount of tricks and around amount of um, wow moments to be impressive have to be doubled, um, you know. And then it's all again in in a competition. It's like the strategy of like what song and what and when you when do you place when do you place it? Are you peaking too soon? And then you have nothing left in your tank. So But something we always tell the the soloists is uh -huh. listen, the other groups, they have to they also have to judge on their cleanliness. Yeah. Right? On 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 the synergy of the group together. Where if you are a soloist and you, you make and a you mistake. make a mistake, <laughs> if you don't show it, they nobody not. will know. We say, if you don't show it, they may not know it. <laughs> yeah. And so they have that advantage. But I, you know, I think it shows in everybody and every single dancer. If you make a mistake, you're kind of like, oh, yeah, no. and, it, and it takes down. But I think the one who can stay with the emotion and really convey that to the judges. Yeah. I, think I mean, our judges possible. are hard judges. Yeah. They, they know everything. I will tell you, they. They, they are. Neil knows. He's like, I saw a mistake there. He points it out. <laughs> he sees or, it. or even in the eye, like Derek and Jennifer both pointed out often. They're like, they, 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 they did, they didn't mean to do that right there. And yeah. I'm like, how do they know? I'm like, ooh, man, you caught them. <laughs> are they watching? I know, obviously, tonight for the finale, they were mentoring. But are they watching dress rehearsal or watching on a monitor um, during any blocking? Or they're fresh yeah. mostly. Yeah, fresh. Yeah. Interesting. So they're seeing it with fresh eyes because I know on other shows, like, so you think I've, you know, I've Nigel, yeah. and Mary, they're always watching the dress rehearsals. So they, they've yeah. got like a couple things to judge on. Yeah, um, they, they have, they have, you know, there's monitors around and yeah. things, but they're doing so many other things prior to the show. 
that um, that they don't. And 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 Jennifer, for one, makes everything around her turn off because she wants to be surprised. Yeah, she wants to really be in the moment. I like that. I want to know about certain styles too. I feel like we're getting closer and closer with ballet, making her farther. Yes. I know Kayla Mack did really well last year. I love styles and Emma this year. Yeah. Um, Oh, and of course, we sort of had a lot of contemporary ballet with Keegan. And, um, but I'm wondering about tap. How can we make tap make it further? I feel like this is the one style that, <laughs> you know, it's, what, it's on there. It's, it's, oh, sorry. I mean, we have a, a lot of tap, but I think it's, they're so dependent on the sounds. Yeah. Right. And we talk about this all the time. If you are at home and you don't have a great sound system, you're not able to hear all, you know, Derek talks about tap a lot. Cause he's, mm -hmm. so pa he loves he's it. yeah, he's super passionate about it, but you're not able to hear those through your TV. It doesn't as translate well. as well. And it right? doesn't, it doesn't, it's more of a live performance kind of thing that to, to feel and hear inherently, but. So we have to, we got to find the guys that are the showman, the showman tappers. Yeah. And we, and there's a couple out there. And uh, hopefully you guys are watching. We want you we want next you. season. Um, Very close this season. <laughs> the thing with each one of those is they are so well. Um, they're really, everybody around the country wants them. They have big jobs. There's some of them are on yeah, big so. tours and big shows. And it's hard to get them away from those shows. But uh, those guys are out there. And We've had so a few nice of them that see. are so close, yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll keep looking for season five. Because I'm always like, come on, Tap. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. They can um, do it. Great addition for season four, Twitch. Um, wow. Yeah, can Twitch. I just make a pitch for him to, to return for season five? In oh, uh, he's already like, listen, you, we have a kindred like relationship with Twitch. I mean, <laughs> we won our first Emmy in one of the routines that we did with him. And we've had um, a long relationship together, him and his wife, him together, and his wife. Together. And we just adore him. He's so articulate. He's so insightful. He's such a, cause he's a dad too. He's like yeah. so nurturing and positive, but you know, it, it's he's the just perfect a good spirit. spirit. He's yeah. a good spirit. His constructive criticism. I, it's yeah. something that I'm always like, Oh, that nugget he, gives them that they can take away with them to yeah. the next rehearsal is yeah. always so helpful. Yeah. yeah. It's so we wonderful. That's why he's called the boss. That's right. We <laughs> love them. Um, I also want to ask, because we've talked a lot this season about team nappy tabs. Um, a lot of the choreographers talked about how great your team is behind the scenes and kind of helping them adjust their routines for this, uh, not only for the stage, but also for the camera. Yeah. Um, can you talk about that process? Because I know you've got, you know, Britt Cherry back there and Katie yeah. Tate and Anthony Kinn, and I think I'm missing someone else. No, Is that everyone? Quite else? a few. I mean, yeah. we have quite a few in, in, the, in the past. In the, in the, yeah. yeah, in the past. I mean, there's been other, done it. others that have finished, yeah, Kyle Hanagami and, mm -hmm. and Tassandra Chavez, who, who went on back. and they were like, I'm going, I don't want to work for it anymore for the show. I want to come back and come be back on and the compete. show. So she won an Emmy. I Last know. Year. No big deal. <laughs> <It's real. laughs> she did. So you know, it's a it's a special kind of uh, of talent to be able to do that and walk in because ultimately we never want to tell, push our agenda. Push, yeah, push on any any agenda on anyone. We just want them to have the best routine possible, and um, and everybody's usually very open when we come mm -hmm. in the room, and we, and we love that about them. And they know in their hearts, I think that we are trying to elevate, their create game. something, right? Like like. A lot of people will have a, especially in the in the ballet and in the lyrical world, mm -hmm. have a lot of things going on at one time. But on camera, we can only watch one thing. Mm -hmm. And in, and it, and for the most part, a lot of a lot of people think that's a bad thing. But to me, that's a great thing. Like you won't miss anything because we get to force you to see what, to we, see what we want you to see, whether it be in an emotion or a trick or a move or something as small as as a, as a hand touching an arm we can force everybody to watch that and, and get the narrative out that we're trying to say. So I think when you explain it to everybody that way, they're, everybody's you open know, they to ta it. We tailor some of those moments so we don't miss them. And that's kind yes, of what's exactly. important, you know, in, in crafting some of these routines, because it's not live. You're not experiencing it in a theater or on a stage where you take it all in, mm -hmm. you know, it's for television. And, and a lot of times, you know, um, our, our team, I always tell them to just go in and, and just watch it, offer, you know, and, and sometimes by the time they get to the end, they're like, do you have any ideas? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, yeah, like, so we're there also as cheerleaders to boost them up or, you know, uh, urge them along because to believe in having someone else come in the room to help believe them um, also is, it goes, is, a, long it goes a long way. 
Yeah, they, I know also you encourage them if you think they have a stronger routine for the duels versus oh, yeah. the redemption round, you might have them switch it around. Yeah, yep. better we'll order. watch their routines and, you know, we can confidently say, uh, yeah, you would go with this one and you're going to do much better or. Who better to, to tell them those things, right, than the people who know the judges. <laughs> yeah. oh, like we work creatively. We work with J-Lo. We work with Derek, Derek and, and we work yes. with Neo. And so, I know what they like. <laughs> I know, we know exactly Trust what they like. Me. There's been a couple times. Why didn't that, they like the. I was going to say, just why didn't they like Oxygen's James Brown piece in, in the duels? I thought that was fantastic. It, it was fantastic. And it's so funny. I, I, I pr promise you, I told them, I said, if you change your wardrobe, it will feel better. And I felt like the bright colors were a little too bubble gummy. And they were such a classy act when they first came out. Um, and they were so, they, they had such a style and they had, had made such an impact that felt a little more artistic. Yes. And this kind of took them back in this fun little funk, which is so hard to do. You know, that style, style is really yeah. hard to do. But I said, it, it, change your wardrobe to elevate the style of it and it would feel better. And they didn't. And that was one of the first things that Jennifer said. She's like, wow, this is my wardrobe. And I was like, I know, they wouldn't listen. <laughs> But you know, that's, it's there, they're on the line. You know, I can only suggest, I can only offer ideas, but you know, they have to cross the line. You know, yeah, we never want to, we never want to tell them anything that the worst fear is that, that we say, suggest something. And this is what we, we preach to our team. We suggest something and then they go home because of the suggestion. Because of the right. suggestion. So you have to be very concrete in what you're saying. And it has to be a definite and we do that often and we bring other people in the room and then we'll talk about it after does everybody agree with that and then yes if one person's like no i think that's better well then that's another eye so there's probably likelihood is a lot of people feel like you so leave it be and, and yeah. it's fine so you know we, we love to know that they live and die by their own sword <laughs> well, I will also say Jennifer took responsibility. She said, I made the wrong decision. She did say that last night. Yeah. So I was just interested yeah. just to hear um, from the other side of that. So she was listening to you, just realized it a little later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know you guys hear this and, and I hear it too from viewers. They get frustrated sometimes with the editing of the dances. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, okay, it's okay. Because no, it's dance is so hard to capture um every little mo moment the exact way you know and it, and it's like art it's like subjective you know you look at it and go oh i think it would be beautiful to see it cut here and go high and the dynamics in the big room and then some people just go i just want to like look at it yes. and i don't want anything else to change other than you know but we're not watching it on in a, in, in a theater kind of environment so you do have to sort of um everybody know, has their opinion on yes. how it should be and, and, you know, and ultimately it, we, we, we take a look at it and, um, Alex, our director, uh, calls cameras and directs it mm -hmm. and then it goes into an edit. So after it leaves our hand where we think it's the best, then it's, it, you know, ultimately NBC, that's NBC's choice or everybody, everybody has a whole's choice. Yeah. And, um, and there's a lot of decisions. There's a lot of things that come into play, you know, it could have been a, a, the camera, the ultimate camera that was great is happens to be repoing or something, or that guy dropped a little or Our another honest, reason. Honestly, it could have been, you know, something that the performer was doing. Yeah. It wasn't, this <laughs> happens magic. a lot. It's so pretty. It wasn't as good as it should have been. It wasn't but as good as it should. Edit, so we just got to go to those judges real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the performers, well, I was going to say the performer is happy that they edited right there. Yeah, uh, you don't we never, hear those. We never do it to hurt the performer. Never. Ever. Mm -hmm. Never. It's never Good done. No, just hopefully, I just, I see the chatter, you know, I see it yeah. on Twitter, I see it in some of the forums and I'm like, I'll yeah. ask, I will ask. Um, we did have a couple of viewer questions and I thought we'd ask them because okay. I think yeah. there's some good ones in here. Um, Tori had a great question and I think a lot of people wanted to know. The semifinals were divided up into two different weeks. There was a set of six and a set of six. How were those two sets of, of acts divided up? Do you know? Uh, yeah, it, no, it, it's it not, was all random. Yeah, and yeah. it's not, and it's not, it wasn't, it's all shot at once. Yeah. We just divided them up into obviously who, <laughs> obviously two from one week and two from the other week would make it to the final. Right. If that makes sense. 
Yes. So in, in so, their in their actual order, if I can re recall right, I have it. I, I, I have the order <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. So semis. Semi's um, one was the young cast, Savannah Mansell, uh, Jeffersoni, Adrianita, Groovement, Curtis Sprung, and then Geometry. And then uh, Semi's two was Keegan, You Peeps, Jake and Chow, Bailey and Keita, Oxygen, and MDC3. I feel, I yeah, it's, feel not, like... it, it, it's not like that. We don't shoot it like that. We shoot them all in one day, though. Okay. If that makes sense. So yeah. we see it all in one day and not usually in the order that it's... On. And then you just kind of create the drama, like, because I think there was great drama between like Jake and Chow and MDC3, because you're putting together a television show. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, we, we shoot everything backstage and there, and oh, literally fair. all of that stuff is like, when you're watching every group, each group is backstage like this. I'm like, guys, get in the game. They're just so in, they, they, they're all so inspired by each other. It's really a, a yeah. nice thing backstage and, and they're all concerned about every group. And they're all concerned about themselves. So um, you, those reactions are really natural for everybody. Yeah, I, they always say it's a very supportive atmosphere backstage. Yeah. I hear that from every contestant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Valerie wanted to know, how do you put together some of the lighting and the graphics for that LED stage? Like, do you guys work together with concepts with the choreographers and the acts? Yeah, generally what'll happen is they'll, they'll start a, they'll have a, a basic idea. They'll have some songs that they have cleared. And then we ask them if there's some sort of narrative that goes with it, a theme or anything. And then we work alongside with them. Um, usually myself and our team, we put together we, a pitch deck and we show them creative looks that we think that will, you know, we support know this, their, support idea. their idea. And obviously if some of the creative ideas that we have, they're like, well, I don't think, but most of the time they're happy that someone else is taking care of the creative in, in the lighting and the, and the, the video overall and look. the lighting and the, pyro and the effects and the yeah yeah you know because they have so much to, to think about already so and then us being you know choreographers ourselves like we can speak their language so mm -hmm. that's been really helpful you know as as um a communicator in that like i will watch the routine and tell oxygen okay she you know what if you do this because at the same time in the video screen, I'm going to go ga 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 and she'll go, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh my gosh. So I'll find ways to try to, to support, accentuate their um, and elevate. What yeah, what they're doing or, you know, uh, especially with the, the, the special effects, you know, music cues. And I know there's a big leap going on. So you hit the pyro and it goes off in the leap. And yeah, like talking to Keegan, like I said, okay, I'm gonna have this tornado in the floor whirling above, you know, but below you, why don't you start and we'll get the camera high above for your opening shot. And she was like, I would have never thought of that. You know, so those little things help them feel, um, you know, because dance is dance, you know, like have all that production value around them. It's exciting for a dancer because it's usually never about us. It's always about a movie or it's about an artist. This is their, the world that they get to be in and this is all supporting them. But they, all, but they also don't just show up and it's there. No. We, we generally talk them through every little bit with a whole creative deck, you know, and it, and it starts with making sure our, our, our network is okay with what we're doing creatively and then we then we go into a music meeting all together about what it's going to be and do we need any sound effects that will support the, the theme and the idea and what they're going to see on stage. And from that mu initial music meeting is where it really starts to go. Yeah. So in that, in that uh, uh, music meeting is our music team and then the rest of the creative team, our wardrobe person, mm -hmm. uh, all of the choreographers, all the head departments, uh, head departments uh, lighting comes in there from time to time. Um, and then video we send off to a company in Germany and those guys do our video for us. They create what? So they create what we need. What, what's in wow. our brains. That's amazing. That's a whole Mad process. Brains. That's a good <laughs> one to think about, like the Michael Domeski one. Oh, Mad Brains. So, you know, when he did the Mad Routine and all everything reacted in the screens. So we just shoot, shot him on a green screen that we have backstage doing the routine and then we were able to multiply them in the screens. Oh, that's so cool. 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 Yeah. It's a good opportunity to go back and watch that on YouTube for everyone too. Yeah, just to, yeah. now that you know the inside secret on it. Um, and Vicente just wanted to know, um, now that you've had four seasons under your belt, is there a season that stands out to you? They're all different, obviously, for different reasons. Like season one was new. It was exciting. 
So you'll never forget that. Right. But it's With rough. all of our like big names on there. Oh season my one. gosh. Between having the Les Twins <laughs> and the Jabberwockies and Keone Amari. Like you had every heavy hitter in the business. Kinja. Kinja Eastwood. Who we come respect on. and known for years and love and said, hey, yo, come on to this new show we got. It's going to be amazing. And it blah, blah, blah. was that. That was a big one. That was a big one. But it was, was also extremely stressful because when you put a, a first chun show up, there's always like this learning curve of like, does this work? Does that work? Oh my God, we should have did the schedule this way. Or, you know, so you're figuring a lot. So season two, we were like, okay, Better. we got this. And then season, three, <laughs> season three was awesome. It was just mm -hmm. so many one after another. We played a lot more with creative. Yeah. We, we, had, we got the video floor in and started doing cooler stuff with mm -hmm. the video floor and interactive things with video. Uh, interactive things with lasers. We and then cool as soon stuff. as you get comfortable, then you change up the format this season. So it was being new all over again. <laughs> on show I mean, this again. one will definitely stand out the most. I think. I mean, we, it was it was so different. And, and of course, with quarantine COVID. and COVID hitting. You'll never forget it, honestly. You'll never forget it. <laughs> You'll never forget it. Um, and we do want to mention and congratulate Jefferson E. Adrianita for their Emmy nomination. Yes. No, I, I think theirs is, um, it's like on... Saturday, September 19th, we'll know. That's their, their right. categories that night. Yeah, awesome, right? That's yeah, awesome. so exciting for them. Um, I, I have to ask, what's ahead for you guys? You guys have been the busiest people um, in Los Angeles, and I, it's been nice to watch you guys breathe and go camping um, and have we a have, moment. We, have, we literally have no up. job. And we have a lot of things planned. Oh, um, meetings and calls about all these potential stuff <laughs> but we haven't had a job since since march and since we, we just i mean i love it I mean, we're camping you guys needed it you guys were going at a pace that like made me a little stressed out no, and i know yeah. you guys love working and you've got a great team but i'm glad to see you guys running around with london and the yeah. mountains and rivers and everything yeah. else. it's the silver lining to all of this you know there like is. we'll be super recharged um you know which is really nice and hopefully derek's show in las vegas I hope so. We're waiting. You know, we were supposed to put his show up um, this summer and I don't Lot, know. Yeah, lots. All the Vegas shows are, are, you know, Paula's been put on hold and, and Derek's been put on hold. Every sh Vegas show has been put yeah. on hold. And it's a little, it's a little sad right now for our business because, um, you know, you think of what we are seeing on on you know the the performers but you have the performers you have um the stage the techs the stage managers the crew the audio like so many people are unemployed um in this yeah, the yeah entertainment world in yeah. the entertainment world and digitally like you know of course there's a lot of conversations going on in ar or making your own avatars with you're not really people but you're those people and it's just no live performance nothing like nothing live we keep going either. back and forth and we come back to that all the time nothing like a live show that's right and you know better days are ahead and I, yes. I'm, I'm just looking forward to when we're just like going to turn this corner and i just feel like we're all going to be like busting out and being really creative again heck yeah we're ready. ready. I'm ready. We're all ready. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us this season, helping us out with all of these videos and making the World of Dance After Show so much fun. It was a pleasure for me, honestly. A pleasure here. for us. And pleasure. you know what I want to say? You are, I don't know if people give you enough credit for how much you do with the entire dance community. It's yeah. really, really, really nice. Thank Hats you. Off. Hats off. I appreciate off your kind people. words. Thank you for being yeah. our advocate. <laughs> I love you guys. I want everyone working and you're up here cheering you on. So I'm like, if I'm not going to be on that world of dance stage, which if you've seen any of my dancing, I'm not. Um, I'm happy <laughs> to applaud everyone. So congratulations on a great season. Fingers crossed. We're going to see you for season five. I yes. hope so. Everybody, everybody tune in. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for an amazing season four. If you missed any of these episodes for the World of Dance After Show, you can find them all on YouTube, World of Dance Studios. And I want to thank Jeremy, who's right over here. He's been with me every step of the way. Thank you for directing my show and being the best champion every single week. And of course, everyone at World of Dance Studios, thank you for this opportunity. We'll see you all next season. Bye. <laughs>